it's always time to make it artsy. And that is as true today as it was in the past. So I was in Ireland recently in a historic home and I looked through the window and it says old antique glass and I suddenly realized that outside looked like a painting. So I brought that photo with me. I haven't done anything to this photo. It's just the antique glass that completely changed the look of the landscape into a painting. And that is what inspired the painting that you see here today. So I wanna show you exactly how I did that. So the very first thing that I did is I thought the window is actually gonna be a great cheat for me. I'm gonna be able to use it to create a grid on my paper. And I'm not really measuring. I know that there are sort of three panes across and then four panes up and down. And I am using a water soluble pencil so that this grid will disappear. But now this is gonna turn me into a super talented landscape painter because I can judge and say, okay, well, I can see that the mountains are below the halfway waypoint so I know exactly where to start sketching them in and the nice thing about landscapes is that because it's natural nobody can tell you that's not exactly how it was then I can go to the next layer oh well I see the trees are kind of here you know and they kind of go up there and blah 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 and you just really play along how far do the clouds come down well the clouds come slightly down here and before you know it you have an incredible paint by numbers. I mean, that's essentially what it is now because I can look at my photo and say, this quadrant is kind of purpley. So I know that this quadrant is gonna be kind of purpley. Now, of course, you don't have to stick to exactly what you see in the photo. You can use your artistic interpretation, but it is nice if you want a guideline. So let's talk about paint. I have two different blues because I noticed there was a light blue and a darker sort of blue in the photo. I have white because I need to mix that in with the clouds and even this kind of light green. I have a yellow because I noticed that there's a kind of yellowy brown tinge to the trees and also in the grass in the front. I have a purple because certainly there is some violet in the cloud area. And then finally, I have a brown because I'm gonna need that in order to capture some of these forest greens and other colors. Personally, when I'm working with acrylic paint, I like to work from the darker colors to the lighter colors. And I work with a dry brush. I also work with a super long paintbrush. And the reason for that is if you choke up on your brush like this, you tend to be super careful, right? You're treating it like a pencil. But if you hold it way back, it really frees you and you start to feel like an artist. So. I'm gonna start into my browns and I'm gonna mix my brown with a little bit of blue and then maybe throw some white in and then a little bit more brown. And this is how color mixing goes. You're just kind of playing around with it until you get the desired color that you're looking for. And now I have this beautiful sort of deep green. I'm following along with my photo and I'm not being careful. I'm not staying in the lines. I'm just sort of seeing what is this kind of deep green color and I'm painting everything that might be that color. Then if I see some regular browny kind of yellows, and notice I didn't clean my brush at all. I just went straight into the next paint that I needed, and I can just go ahead and add this in. And remember, you're gonna keep layering. One of the beautiful things about acrylic paint is that it really stays well, dry really, really quickly. So you don't have to worry too much. I might even mix in a little bit of light blue, a little bit of dark blue in with the pile of green I already have to get those colors going like you can see here. And after I work on that for a little while, I am gonna have something that's starting to look like this. It looks like a mess. That's awesome, that's exactly what I want. So then I'm gonna take some white and you can see because I have a dirty brush that the white is blending out to a beautiful light green. And that's perfect because I can come in here now and add my little highlights where I want. I can pick some yellow up 
And again, add some white to make it nice and bright. I can come along the bottom here, make it really active and playful and come through. Okay, just like that. I can even add some more yellows into here. Maybe mix a little bit of yellow and some brown. And I do love to mix on this gray palette paper because I think you see the color a little bit more clearly. Don't be afraid to mix your own colors. It's too hard to have all the colors of paint, I think. It's like, then you can never find what you need. It makes it very difficult. When you mix your own colors, you really need one, two, three, four, five, six colors, and you've got so much available to you. So just continue to work and play and relax. And again, keep moving my hand back because I want to choke up on it because I'm nervous and I want it to work out every single time, right? Play with it, come in, add your purples and blues and a little bit of white. Let's make this cloud happen. And when the contamination of color from other areas of the painting happens, that's fantastic because it means that actually these colors are coming up into the rest of it, which is exactly what I want. So I can always clean off my brush and put in those nice, bright, white highlights. And I've been using the photo as a guide, but if you look at the photo compared to the finished painting, they're not the same. It's just inspired by, because we all need a spark to get us started.